right, welcome back to Jeff Kuenange live here on the day after the 14 Riverside Drive attack. My guest, Secretary General of Kenya Red Cross, Abbas Goulet, the man who is always, always first on the scene. And I tell you, folks, he never gets tired of it. I don't know how he does it. In fact, Robert Borale, my good friend, says history will judge Abbas Goulet very kindly. He has his hands on leadership always at the forefront of helping others. Kudos to Abbas Goulet. I'm telling you, man, I really, I don't understand how you do it, but every time you keep doing it, I mean, what is it? Were you born to be a firefighter? Is that what it is? First responder? Mm -hmm. Well, Kenya Red Cross has a motto, first in, last out. Hmm. Yes, always first in would be the community around uh, a scene of an accident bystanders, people are walking around or driving or whatever. But our promise to Kenyans is when it happens, if we're not the first one, we'll be among the first ones. But we will be first in, last out. Yeah. Uh, and, and that I want to thank the thousands, hundreds of thousands of young Kenyans, men and women of goodwill, volunteers largely, not even on our payroll, <laughs> who would always be out there to be their brothers and sisters keepers. Uh, it's a calling. It's a promise that we have undertaken. And for me, uh, it's not about me, it's about the team, because Abbas is just one member of a team. I might be the team leader today. For us, there would be an incident commander who the first person that responds would be the first one to take charge. When the next level and the next level and the next level come, they may take over. Mm. But personally for me, uh, I said earlier, uh, you saw DCI Kinoti yesterday, mm. okay? Mm. Leading men and women of uniform uh, who are the first responders, yeah. the JSU, the record group. For me, that is leadership. When heads of these agencies are out there, the men and women, rank and file, will feel elevated. If my boss can be here, why not me? Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And why should we not be on the scene as leaders and captains of these various companies and ships when, when disaster strikes. Yeah, one thing I noticed yesterday, I don't know about you, SG, is that one group of people who were not on the scene, which was really good, politicians, they didn't show up. As opposed to Westgate, where everyone was fighting for airtime, none of them showed up, which I think was a good thing. I think it was a very good thing because uh, politicians have a duty and mandate and responsibility because they're elected by the masses, but it's very good to leave this work to the professionals. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Leave it to the pro professionals. I got called by many politicians yesterday. And my message was, the government is coordinating this. Let's give them space. Let's give them chance. Let's give them opportunity to do their work. The defense forces are there. They are leading this. On the other side, there was a coordination set at a high command level. A number of PSAs, you know, PS uh, Macharia, you have Kibichio, you had um, uh, the IG, uh, the minister himself, who were out there at that level dealing with a bigger picture. At this level of the operation, you had the DCIO and the other uh, senior GSU and police uh, officers who are there. On the other hand, you had the humanitarian actors who are complementing the efforts of the government in the first place. That's my role. My role is to complement the efforts of the government. I'm auxiliary to the government by law. Mm. I would be expected when a disaster strikes, I work hand in hand with the government. Um, we have our experience in terms of recovery, in terms of medical. We had ambulances, St. John's was there, AMREF was there, AR was there, uh, you know, Avenue Hospital, uh, Nairobi Women's Hospital. So how did we get here in terms of coordination? Immediate aftermath of Westgate, we managed to do SOPs and mass casualty incident coordination and management. So we even brought friends and colleagues from Israel, the Israel Red Cross, yes. who came here and worked with us, with the police, with the government, with the military, with the private sector actors uh, and all humanitarian actors. So we had drills that have been conducted and we've run these drills time and time and time again. So it's just not by sheer accident we got where we are today, okay? 
But if you also saw from the security armed forces side of things, from what happened to Westgate to what happened yesterday, you saw that yesterday this was seen more as an internal problem. Mm. So the police had total control over this, yeah. and rightfully so. The military didn't come in because of, although it was external ag aggression, but inside the country. So the military also, in this case, was there, gave space to the police mm. to run and manage this, yeah. the GSU and the record group. And we must remind people that GSU actually falls under police, right? Yes. Not military. Yes. They're actually... Yes. But these are special forces that are trained. trained. These are commandos. Yeah. Very highly talented young men and yeah. young men. I mean, if you saw what they did yesterday, combing this whole area, securing 700 plus people, securing the whole compound, dealing with the terrorists and, and you know, taking them out. Uh, those guys came well prepared, the, the enemy, and they were well armed. If you saw the amount of ammunition that they had with them, mm. it was just crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah. they had come in for a long haul. Yeah, absolutely. But Ab this time there was no long haul uh, because the forces knew what they were doing. And even after the pictures we've seen, I'm, I'm sure they're all over social media, of the dead terrorists, mm -hmm. there were lots of magazines on them. They still had lots Plenty. of... Even as they were killed. Yeah. Yes. And there were a lot of hand grenades. In fact, when we were out there yesterday in Iron m Bank mm -hmm. building, which is the first building they went into, mm -hmm. if you, we, we had uh, hand grenades that had not been uh, cocked out, oh. or they were still there with the pin. The pin, yeah. The pin hadn't been removed. It was and just in, lying there? Yes, at least we saw three. I mean, the one that was in, down the staircase and two others. And a lot of shooting that they had done. Uh, the damage in the inside of this, especially glasses, it was just crazy, madness. Un and the same in the hotel. Unbelievable. Yes. Tell me something, SG. You guys at the Red Cross and you first responders and humanitarians, do you, do you train every day for days like this? Is it, I mean, is this what you look forward to? And I'm not saying that in a, in a facetious way. The, I mean, this is what you train for. The next terrorist attack, the next road accident, the next disaster. That's for what sure. you guys do. For sure. For sure. Uh, so what we have, uh, and you saw the ambulances, the Red Cross, the St. John's, and all those others. These are now professional. You have paramedics, you have doctors, you have emergency medical technicians who have been trained as first responders. Because by the time patients are taken to hospital, they have been stabilized, there's triage, they have been handled, they are well uh, taken care of, and then they're put into transit into the hospital. The hospital already can receive information about the patients we are bringing. And the hospitals are ready. Hospitals also have trained and they have prepared, they have done their own drills. If you are to get mass casualty, what do you do? And there are wards that they can open up, whether it's Kenyatta, Aga Khan, Mpisha, Nairobi Hospital, even the smaller hospitals. Mm. So today, that is why the 30 or so injured people were taken to about five different hospitals. Oh. So as not to overload one hospital. SG, if you were to look back on yesterday yes. and say the one big lesson we learned yesterday was? Coordination. And government coordination, government leadership. Leadership and coordination, because this is crucial, fundamental for any emergency. And it was clear and evident that there has been lessons learned and there was no chaos. It wasn't chaotic. Yeah. It was very well managed, yeah. very well organized, as tough as it was that fighting was going on mm -hmm. and all the shooting that was going on. Also, for the first time, I mean, they were clear Separation. The media were kept on the side mm. and they were told, wait mm. until we are ready to give you information. Yeah. If now all the media guys were allowed to come in there and run around and run amok in taking pictures and those pictures have been really been circulated. I think what we need to learn is when we're in such a situation, the country is attacked by an enemy. My plea, especially for the Kenyan media, uh, we shouldn't do what happened with the New York Times yesterday. Mm -hmm. We can't play out to the hands of the terrorists. Yeah. Because, you know, if you go start saying 10, 15, 20 killed, these are the pictures, this is how it looks about civilians killed. You know, what are we trying to do? We're playing to the hands of the, of the enemy. Yeah. And as a citizens of this country, we have been attacked as a nation. We didn't go to attack anybody. And we must then put the nation first before all of us. And we must be able to 
give out information at the appropriate time to the appropriate people. People lost loved ones. It is the responsibility of the government to inform the next of kin of the loved ones who, who are lost before we tell the whole world. And the other thing is, there are some terrorists sitting in wherever they're sitting, looking at the TV, li yes. live television. Yes. So they're also informing their guys on the ground. Precisely. This is what's happening. Precisely. Precisely. So if, we, if the media was in there and taking pictures of this building, this building, this building, mm -hmm. Grovesna. Mm -hmm. Grovesna is where it was the last building where this morning 170 people were evacuated. Whoa. This morning at 3.30 in the morning. 170. People were evacuated from the fifth floor up there and all the other floors. So if that was something that was being played into the hands of the enemy, then mm -hmm. what happens? Rightly what you are saying. Yeah. So actually the buildings were interconnected so they could cross over into that building mm -hmm. and go and boom. Yes. And create another massive casualty. Correct. And collateral damage. Yeah. So when the police of the government tells us, give us space, even we as humanitarian actors, we are told, please pull back. Give us the space. Yeah. We have work to do. Okay? Kimeoman mm. hapa. To pay nafasi. Yeah. You have to oblige. And you have to obey and respect that command because that's what he or she is trained for. That's their work. So when you say earlier about politicians, it is good they stayed back because mm. what would they have come and done there? Yeah. Create more havoc and or problem? Distraction. Yes. And there's no time for that. So coordination and leadership for me is crucial. Yeah. And that's what we have learned in this exercise. During these last two days, how can we even further improve on that is the next step. Uh, well, look, yeah. It's, a very it's not only on terrorist attack, yes. but even when building collapse in Nyamakima, Huruma, right. and all these right. places, right. again, coordination. Uh -huh. Yeah? Yeah. Because you have to save life for people who are under, and you have to protect more about their pro property. Even here yesterday and today, what for me was telling is that here, the property... And, and, and lives, not only lives, but the property, the shop owners and all these businesses are being protected. SG, uh, uh, let me ask you this question, and you know, maybe none of us have an answer to it, but is another Westgate, is another 14 Riverside, are those events, uh, will they happen again? Are they inevitable? Jeff, I think what, you know, <laughs> I think when the dust settles down, I think you should talk to the IG mm. and you should talk to the head of Kenya uh, Defense Forces mm. or some of the men and women of uniform who are on the front line on the Kenyan Somali border and all other borders. Because although I'm not privy to any information, but I know for fact uh, you had previously government saying how many threats real and even maybe non-real that comes through every day mm. across the country mm. that the government is able to deal with and stop from it happening that we never hear of that we never hear of uh -huh. could be hundreds or even a thousand probably that's my from just intuition and my experience 45 years being in this business mm. Mm. So unfortunately, when the one happened in 100 or one in 1,000, yeah. what we all think as a nation and as a, as a globe is that one black dot. In this big world you have here, one black dot is what people will see. Yeah. The rest, which is white 99.9%, .9 we don't see. So I think as a nation, we should be grateful to our men and women of uniform. Mm. We should be grateful that the president has put this on top of his agenda on the safety and security of Kenyans yeah. post Westgate, um, uh, Mpeketoni, Garissa, and many other smaller ones to now this one. It's unfortunate it has happened. It should never have happened. But we should look at the positive side how many have been thwarted from happening since Westgate? Yeah. And you, I can bet my money, and I'm not a gambler, that hundreds, if not over a thousand. That we've thwarted. As a country, yeah. through our men and women of, of intelligence, security, and military. Yeah. 
But unfortunately, this one happened. Why? I'm sure they're asking, our forces are asking themselves questions. In spite of the success that they had yesterday and today in neutralizing the enemy, I am sure one would say, you know, how did it happen? I'm sure they'll question themselves. Yeah. And, and they will find answers. And you can see how swift they have moved. Mm -hmm. Now, people have been arrested already. Correct. Correct. Within less than 48, I mean 24 hours. Yeah. I mean, this is where you see systems are in place. They are working. They are functioning. There may be a problem. It happens in France. Mm -hmm. It happens in London. Yeah. It happens in New York. Yeah. It happens in, in, in Bombay. You know? So, but people only see, oh, Kenya. Is Kenya prepared? Is Kenya safe? Can Kenya cope with this? I think our guys have shown today. You know, SG, I'm glad you mentioned France and the UK and the US and all those countries because in those countries, they are quick to bounce back. In other words, you know, they don't scare off tourists. They don't scare off investors. You know, after a terrorist attack in Paris or wherever, the next day, tourists are booking flights to Paris. Well, I mean, well, well, I hope and pray the same will happen yeah. this time around. Mm. That... <laughs> There's no country that is immune to terrorism and to terror, okay? Uh, and Kenya is not an exception to the rule, okay? So uh, you had the president saying that our partners and, 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 and uh, partners and friends of this country have stood by the country during crisis. We hope that even in this particular case, mm. Uh, the projection on our tourism, the projection on people coming to this country will not, uh, will not suffer. Because really, yes, we need to bounce back and get on with our lives. Yeah. And I think Kenyans were getting back on their lives today. And we had a good run. I mean, things were really looking so positive. Well, I hope they'll continue to be positive. Yeah. Because we'll be uh, fooling ourselves to think that there'll be no problems of this nature. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. How many times does it happen in Paris? How many times does it happen in London? Yeah. How many times does it happen in, in, in U.S.? Whether it's local tourism in the U.S. or mm -hmm. international. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you get back to, to, to normality the next day. And I think here, while we cannot forget the, uh, the loss of lives of ordinary Kenyans and the non-Kenyans who have died here, uh, you know, the saddest part was um, last night when we picked the five bodies from the restaurant. Uh, the, 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 the two foreigners who died, the Brits and the American, uh, the Brit who died had only been in the country for one month. Okay? He was having lunch um, with a British lady who had only come into the country a day earlier. Oh. And she was shot. And she had a bullet wound on her abdomen and on her legs and was taken to Aga Khan. And I went to Aga Khan hospital last night. She was just coming out of theater, still unconscious, uh, not fully conscious, uh, but they were friends of hers and, uh, who were there and her mom and her uh, partner were flying last night to come in because they had been called. I carried her handbag with her passport and money and wallet and everything, and I gave it to these friends. But I had also called uh, the, the embassy mm. to alert them about that because mm. I had her passport and her details. Yeah. Uh, so, so there are people who are friends of this country, uh, and thank God she survived. Uh, for the American, very sad. I, I don't know him, but uh, I know of people who knew him. Uh, including a friend, Gina Dean, who said she knew Jason very well for a long time. Yeah. Uh, very sad. His parents, I'm told, are coming the next uh, day or so. Uh, and you know? I, I heard he survived 9-11. I, I saw that on Facebook today. His yeah. brother posted it. Yes. He, Jason survived 9-11 yes. and was coming to Africa on a humanitarian mission. I mean, he just loved the continent. And that is the story that many are saying. Uh, Lindway, the, uh, the British girl who was uh, wounded yesterday, she has been uh, in Ethiopia before coming here. Probably she was working there. Mm. So there are people, of course, who love the continent, love these countries. But it's very sad uh, for what has happened. But we must pick the pieces and get on with life. Absolutely. Yes. Well put, as It's up to people like you and me and lots of people out there to pick up from here and talk positive about this country. Let's take a quick break, come back. Well, when we come back, we'll read your tweets, plenty of them coming thick and fast about this attack on 14 Riverside and how Kenyans have risen out of it all and are moving up, picking up the pieces and moving on. Keep tweeting at Quinn Jeff at Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag. 
is JK Live. It's JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.